Okay, so for our next feature, um, we want to modify what is displayed on the index page. So previously we created a little bit of a, a nav bar um, that has rearranged some of the elements on our page. So now we want to add some code to on that main index page, um, display all of the journal entries. Um, so it's a little bit more, more useful as, a, as our habits of mind journal. Um, so we're gonna focus on this route here which is the route for the root endpoint here, just the slash, um, which we often refer to as the index page. Um, and so currently we log the path, which is fine. We can keep that. Um, and then we just call render on, on index. Um, what we want to do is we want to, before we call render on index, we want to query the database to get all of the journal entries and then pass those along um, such that when we render the index, we can dynamically generate the HTML to display those as well. So that's the code we're gonna write together. Um, so let's do that. So we'll pick up here right after we log the path. Um, let's get all of the entries from the database. Um, and here's how easy it is to do that with uh, Mongoose um, helping us out with our MongoDB stuff. I'm going to create a variable called entries, um, and I'm going to invoke the entry.find method. Um, and you may, uh, I hope you recall from previously when we first learned about MongoDB queries, um, find with no arguments finds um, all of the documents um, in the specified uh, collection. And that's what we want in this case. Um, so we will find all of those documents. Now, uh, you may also remember that find um, is an asynchronous operation. Um, and so it returns a promise. And so we want to wait, to, uh, wait for that promise to be resolved. Um, you'll notice, however, that we have a little uh, squiggle here on the await. We get a parsing error. Um, from our linter, um, it says cannot use await outside an async function. Um, so one of the reasons uh, why I have the linter as a recommended extension, um, yes, lint in particular, um, is because normally we wouldn't be made aware of this error until we went to run our code, and then we'd have to figure it out. Um, the sooner we can detect an issue, the easier and cheaper it is to fix. And so in this case, it's pretty easy to fix. It says we can't use the keyword await outside of an async function. So we better make this function that we're declaring here an async function. And like we've done below four, we do that by adding the async word here. So that gets rid of that, that error. All right. The next thing we're gonna do is um, basically take that data that we get from the database um, and format it in uh, a more user-friendly way. Um, and so I'm gonna add a comment here to provide some context. I'm gonna say convert MongoDB objects to objects formatted for the EJS template. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of conversion of what that looks like. Um, and GitHub Copilot was recommending some things here. Oops, let me go back there. Um, Let's take a look at what they're recommending here. Formatted entries, entries.map. Um, it's got some stuff here, not quite what I want, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna accept this um, and then we're just gonna modify it. So we are gonna use the map function. And so entry is our, our parameter for this arrow function that we're defining right here to be invoked for each element um, that has been returned from uh, find and is stored in entries. Um, and we are going to return a different object that's formatted correctly. And so the first property I actually want to define is ID. Um, and we're going to do entry dot underscore ID. This is that property that's um, all MongoDB documents have. Um, we're going to use that as a unique identifier for a given document and therefore a unique identifier for a given journal entry. Um, so we'll map that to a property called ID. Um, for date, um, the way date is stored in the Mongo database, we want to uh, make it a little bit more human readable um, and also present it in the appropriate, um, what we call locale. 
Um, so that, that varies about country and time zone and all of this type of stuff. And dates get really crazy complicated quickly. Um, but we're not going to worry about those details now. We're just going to say entry.date, and that's going to return the, the date object. And so we're going to use the to locale date string method. Um, which will return a string formatted for our current location. Um, email, we don't really need the email here at all, so I'm going to delete that entirely. Habit, um, entry.habit, that works well. And for content, um, this is to display each journal entry on our index page. And the content could be like fairly long. We don't really necessarily want to have room for that. So we're going to reformat the content in such a way as to like truncate it. Um, and so a nice method we can invoke um, on that string of content is the slice method. Um, you may be familiar with this conceptually from Python. So we're going to slice from zero up to um, and not include in 20. Um, and then we'll concatenate an ellipsis on the end here. I don't want the L, just that. Um, so it'll be like, here's the beginning of the journal content and then dot, 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 like it's continued. There we go. All right, that looks really nice. Um, so now when we render this index page, we can pass along entries um, will be our variable name within the EJS file and formatted entries is the name of the variable here in this router.js file. And so we will pass this array of entries um, into index.ejs so we can dynamically generate our HTML. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. So a couple of changes here. Let's find all of the journal entries in the database. Let's take that array of objects um, and convert that into an array of slightly different objects with different properties formatted in different ways um, in preparation of displaying it in our EJS template. So let's add it to our EJS template. So we're invoking index here. We're rendering the index EJS page. So we'll find index.ejs. Um, here it is. And uh, pretty basic, we got our index top bar so far, but we want to add more information to the main site. So we'll do that here. Let's create another div and name this class entries, and that will allow us to do some styling here in a moment. Um, and we're going to um, use some of this like inline JavaScript code that we love with EJS. And so this doesn't look awful from a GitHub Copilot perspective. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept it, and then we're going to make some edits. And this is what's so important, I guess, with using GitHub Copilot. Um, you can only effectively make these decisions if you have that strong foundation. If you don't know what it's su suggesting, and you're just like, well, that sounds good to me, um, it's, it's going to end up not working out well. Um, so this isn't actually all that close, but we'll, we'll make it work. We'll make some changes. So I'll accept what GitHub Copilot said, but we're going to change a lot of this. Personally, let's actually just delete the GitHub Copilot code. I don't think it's that close to what we want. And we'll write our own. Um, so less than percent, start our embedded JavaScript here for let entry of entries. Love it. Open our brackets. And then percent greater than to finish um, the, the JavaScript for loop stuff. And now the HTML code that's going to be repeated over and over again. We'll do div. Um, class equals entry. I do like that part. And then inside of that, we'll have a div um, for the entry date. And we'll do the variable substitution. So less than percent equal entry dot date. And then percent greater than to close that out. And then we'll add another div. Um, and we'll do class equals entry habit. This will allow us to apply different styling to it. And less than percent equal sign entry dot habit. Oh, I messed that up. Sorry. There we go. 
entry.habit. And we'll close out that div. Um, then we'll do another div. Um, oh, I like this one, div class entry content, entry.content. So sometimes you might notice if you don't like the GitHub Copilot recommendation for a large chunk of code and you just start typing your own, it kind of starts to figure out where you're headed better um, and will offer um, a better suggestion like it's doing here. I like this entry content thing perfectly. Um, and then, so we're gonna display the date and the habit and the content. And then what I wanna display is a, a button um, that can be used to edit this entry. So let's display the button. Um, we'll have another div for the button and we'll do a href equals slash edit entry. Um, so here's the thing. Um, in the past, when we've done these, these links, these hrefs, uh, we've always specified some endpoint um, absolutely or, or definitively. Um, it is advantageous to have a more flexible approach sometimes for endpoints and being able to edit an entry is a perfect example of that. Um, we can actually use the endpoint itself that is part of the path in the URL to specify which entry we want to edit. It also enables some like deep linking um, applications, which is nice in terms of there is a specific URL to get to each and every journal entry that we have. Um, so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna say edit entry slash, and then much like what they have here, I'm gonna actually accept GitHub Copilot. Um, our, our endpoint is slash edit entry slash, and then we're embedding a variable here of entry dot ID. I got rid of the underscore there because in our class, we just called it ID. Role equals button, like we've seen before. Um, but we also wanna add a second, or we want to add a class here of secondary um, and that makes it clear uh, that we can use that for styling and be like this is a secondary button it's like not like the major create entry button that's up in our toolbar um, so we can display that better all right so we'll save this all right so we close that we close this div we close this div um, and then we need to actually close out our EJS stuff We've got another div and we'll get rid of that one. Let's see if that lines up. Main, this, and I feel, I feel like I have too many divs here. Get rid of this one too. Check all my arrows. That looks good. I think everything is balanced out. I'm gonna move edit onto its own line because I like this formatting better. There we go. Very nice. We are almost there. Okay, so we have all the code now to add every entry. And again, so like all of this for each entry of entries, all of this HTML will be generated and all the variables will be substituted to dynamically generate that HTML, which is fantastic. Let's now go into our styles, our CSS file, and add some styles specifically for um, this entry stuff. So let's do some stuff for the uh, for an entire entry. So I'll do dot entry to focus on a selector for um, that specific uh, for each entry, um, and we are going to continue to use flexbox. So we'll stay with that. Um, our flex direction, however, is in the row direction. We'll define this for a row. So we'll keep going. Um, flex wrap, no wrap sounds good to me, so I'll accept that. Justify content, not quite what I want. I don't want to do space between, I want to do flex start. So we'll do that instead. Um, align items, uh, center, all good. Uh, let's create a gap of 10 pixels, sounds good to me. And let's create a border um, that is black. Um, one pixel and solid. Cool. So that will be the general styling for a journal entry. Let's do some additional styling for the entry habit class specifically. Um, we want this displayed um, so that we can actually read the habit and, and that's what really matters here in terms of like different um, screen widths and things. So I'm just gonna say flex basis, oops, flex dash basis. 
um, 200 pixels. Like we, that's what we need to display our habit of mind. And then finally, um, let's do entry content. So this will be some styling for the content section and we'll say flex grow one. Um, there we go. So more, a little more flex box stuff to make this work. So let's see what this all looks like. Um, so I'm going to switch over here to run and debug. Um, I'm going to start the node server first, choose node server, hit the run button. It's off and running. I think let me bring up a new terminal. Go to my debug console to make sure. Yep, server is listening. MongoDB connected, wonderful. Switch over to the node client, run that. Here's my node client. Make this a little bit larger. Um, this looks kind of cool, right? Like here's our web page. The styling isn't fantastic, um, but we have the dates. We have all the habits of mind. We have the content um, that's been abbreviated. We have this edit button. All of this looks really, really good. Um, if I click the edit button, it's not going to work. It's going to say cannot get edit entry um, with this ID uh, because we haven't made a route for that yet. Um, and so that's what we're going to focus on next. How do we make a route for this? Specifically, how do we make a route without having to specify every possible um, object identifier? Okay, so let's actually add that route. Let me show you how we can do that in, in a kind of cool way. Um, so we're going to go back to router.js where we have all of our routes. Um, and so, you know, here's our, our to get the index and here's to get the create entry and the post for create entry. So after all of these, we're going to add a new route, get, um, for edit entry. Um, so we want to type slash edit entry because that's the uh, the endpoint we specified. Um, but it's obviously we can't write one of these routes for every possible object idea. So the ID. So there's a cool way you can do this in Express by basically having a wild card um, endpoint um, that is where a number of things will match it, and whatever matches gets assigned to a variable. And the syntax for this is to do colon and then ID. And ID becomes the variable. Okay. Um, cool, right? So the rest of this code looks good. I'll accept that. Um, and then within this code now, I can actually use um, this variable ID here. Um, and the way I do that is as GitHub Copilot is showing us. So um, we will invoke the find by ID method on the entry class. Um, and what we'll pass as a parameter is the ID we are interested in. And where this ID from the URL is, um, or the endpoint is stored, is inside the request dot params dot, in this case, ID, because that's the name I used here. Okay. If this was called something else here, it'd be the same name here. That's the important connection to make. Um, we're not going to actually render a page or display anything here. That's going to be a left as an exercise for all of you later. So we're just going to do console.log um, entry. We'll just log it and then we'll send it back on the page without any like formatting or HTML or anything. We'll just send it like this. Um, I must have accepted more code than I realized. We'll clean that up too. So we'll close our function, get rid of that stuff. There we go. So that's our new added entry. So we can see that this reloaded here. Um, so let's go back to here. Um, and again, click on one of the edit buttons here. Um, and we can see that now we don't get an error, um, but instead we have successfully fetched um, from our database using that find by ID. And so here's the same ID in the URL as the ID displayed here for the object. Here's the date. Notice it is not formatted nicely because we're just printing the object right from MongoDB. Here's my email, here's my habit, here's my content, everything's here. Pretty cool. Um, so later you all can make this actually look good and editable and all of that type of stuff. All right, that is um, our second to last feature that we're going to do for this web app.